Hello. So today we will start from electron transport proteins. In the first part, we will deal about some of the important molecules which are basically iron containing proteins. Hmm? So, we will have iron containing proteins and we will think about the functional role basically which is very important to know how iron is functioning there for a different type of reactions. So, we will think about the functional role of the central metal ion that means the iron. So, in all these molecules it can play one part as a structural role and in some other places what we have discussed earlier that these iron containing proteins also function as storage and transport. And next is what we will be talking today is electron transport. Which we all know they are very important molecules <laughs> cytochromes. Hmm? So, they are present within the cell which we all know that they are the cytosols and they are very much colored that means they have some chromophoric part which is responsible for color absorption. So, they are our cytochromes and also we know their function in dioxygen binding. In hemoglobin and myoglobin molecules. and we will discuss little bit about their catalytic function which is also very important. Therefore, they are large and diverse in nature. So, the main backbone of all these molecules are our porphyrin molecules. Hmm. So, we will have the porphyrin in the system. Hmm. So, the heme proteins we all know. So, these porphyrin molecules they are giving rise to a 4 nitrogen atoms to the iron center and this particular name has a origin for the Greek word. purple is strongly colored. So, EP visible spectroscopy also help us the presence of these cytochromes. In fact, they have been determined first by knowing the corresponding characteristic spectra of all these molecules. So, they are all the porphyrin presents and which is a basic part of it and this porphyrin as the single unit as the pyrrole and we have the tetrapyrrole unit. So, this tetrapyrrole unit we get
So, it has different substitution positions. So, depending upon their different substitutions, they are of different types that we will see afterwards. But at the same time, when people discovered these molecules and interesting molecules for the different activities, and one of them has been identified as the protoporphyrin. They have the typical nomenclature for their different substitution and sometimes they have the historical origin also. So, when this particular backbone have 4 methyl to vinyl and to propionic acid that you should little bit remember that what are the different substitutions because these substitutions play some important role while we talk about some heme proteins or heme B protein in hemoglobin and myoglobin and the cytochromes. So, when these substitutions we have, we get a heme B molecule. And when people made these molecules, they were also interested for laboratory synthesis. Hmm. So, we all the time we can have the corresponding molecule in the laboratory, you can make the molecule and how the metal complexation is taking place in presence of the iron that people can compare. So, this is also a very simple reaction of 4 molecules of pyrrole with respective aldehydes. So, when you use formaldehyde, we get CH2 bridging. Otherwise, we can have also substitutions at these positions. Hmm. So, all these positions can be occupied by these R groups. Hmm. So, this particular basic unit which we can have. So, we have the 4 nitrogens and these two have hydrogens only. So, basically we get a ligand which is LH2 type. So, you have two nitrogens having bearing protons and those two nitrogens can go for the deprotonation while it is complexing with the iron center when we go for the good for the corresponding heme protein. So, this particular unit when we get, so we know already that we get the heme proteins when the ligand is your porphyrin. So, it is a macrocyclic ligand. Hmm. So, that porphyrin which is coordinated to your iron. Then one class of molecule we will talk about which is cytochrome P450. So, they are also him containing group of enzymes. So, they are some kind of enzymatic reaction they can show. Him enzymes. Then we all know how the different metal ions can change the molecule. So, the same porphyrin can be used for coordination to magnesium. So, when porphyrin coordinated to magnesium. So, this particular ligand is very useful to give you chlorophyll. Then for one another type of macrocyclic green we get which is one sort one carbon sorter analog which is known as corals in 
beta b b 12. So, which is so we will have the corals which is present in vitamin B 12. So, it has one carbon sorter system So, one carbon sorter analog. Then we have another group of molecules known as corpins C O R P I N S, which is present in cofactor F430. So, which is highly reduced for firing, but now it is coordinated to nickel and nickel is showing <coughs> presence of this macrocyclic ligand corpin a important reaction which is present in the active site in methyl coenzyme M reductase which is required in methane producing bacteria and is the last step for the production of methane. So, in this background when we have the 4 pyrrole units and 4 pyrrole units are connected to each other and they give some in plane coordination that means when it is connected to iron you have 4 in plane coordination which are satisfied by 4 nitrogens in it and another group of molecules people have tried and synthesized in the laboratory also which is known as thalocyanin, thalocyanin and here we get some of these carbons substituted by nitrogen. So, they are known as nitrogen substituted porphyrin. How they are substituted in the backbone? What we have? We have seen that we have that methylene connector. So, you have the pyrrole unit on the one hand and another pyrrole unit on the other hand. So, basically sometime also during the ligand synthesis we can connect two pyrrole units by a methylene or methane bridge, but when these are substituted by nitrogen. So, nitrogen and this double bond. So, these molecules are known as therefore, thalocyanin. So, people have tried to make all these molecules and their reactivity with the different metal centers people have tried because all the time when we try to get the compound until and unless we make the compound nicely and go for the structural determination, we always rely on the spectroscopy thing. So, spectra will always compare. So, if you have the model compound and some of these cytochromes or hemoglobin or cytochrome P450 type of molecule, we always try to compare those spectra with the model compounds and then we try to say that okay, this has this environment and that is giving some important reactions related to that iron center because we are not going away further or far away from the iron center. So, what are our cytochromes? So, ligand has been defined or identified that we have this particular ligand environment 
and within that ligand environment as we know from our knowledge from hemoglobin or myoglobin type of molecule that we have the iron center and in most of these drawings we will see that this is your porphyrin plane. So, we are viewing the from the plane of this porphyrin ring. So, only this particular part is available and then we have the fifth coordination site and the sixth coordination site. So, when we have this then here it is connected to some imidazole side chain so, imidazole side chain of some of the long protein chain which is in this particular case is histidine 18. So, this particular environment we all know that this was present in the myoglobin molecule. So, you have four coordination sites coming from the macrocyclic porphyrin ring and the fifth from the histidine imidazole ring and this particular site sixth site was available for binding to dioxygen molecule. But in this particular case this is also connected by methionine sulfur. So, methionine group we know that amino acid residue from the methionine is S methyl group. Then you have the CH2 and CH2 function. So, this is methionine 80. So, all the six coordination sites are fulfilled. So, you have a nice octahedral iron center and that iron center will be responsible for our electron transport. This will be responsible for electron transport, but what is the difference between these with that of our heme protein which is present or the heme group is present in the myoglobin or hemoglobin molecule that we can see that in this particular case we have that iron center and this iron center is bound to 4 nitrogens of the porphyrin ring. So, it is very easy to draw because you draw the 4 for fine ending and then connect it. Hmm. So, have the unsaturation, the positions. So, you have now choice for the different substitutions what we have seen that we can have the substitutions. So, these are the positions. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 positions for the different substitutions and we basically number it starting from this carbon. So, if this is 1, the next is 2 this is 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, this is 19, 20. It's up to this point 20, 
then this nitrogen is numbered as 21, second nitrogen is numbered as 22, third is 23 and then 24. So, all the positions we have numbered. Okay. So, numbering is very important because most of the cases because the different types of cytochromes if we say the cytochrome A, cytochrome B, cytochrome C, D etcetera. So, we will talk about only the substitutions because all these substitutions play some important role particularly their PK, how they bind and their corresponding shapes also. So, when this particular cytochromes are there, so you have one is the methyl substitution at number 2, then you get something what is that sulphur. This is methyl this is also sulphur, this is this is CH 2 CH 2 that means, the propionic acid function we all know from the hemoglobin and the myoglobin molecules. So, this is also a propionic acid. and this is CH 3. So, if we just simply recall that what is our him B system? In him B system the upper porphyrin ring these two are different. The upper one this one and this one. those were having methyl as well as on the right hand side you have the vinyl substitution. Here it was methyl, but this is your vinyl substitution. So, what is happening there now? Because this is the only difference with that of our hemoglobin and myoglobin molecule that now you have a protein chain. So, protein is the protein chain is coming close to the porphyrin ring and it has two cystinyl residues and those cystinyl residues are attaching or attacking rather to the vinyl ring. So, vinyl substitution. So, you have a thioether linkage direct thioether linkage with the protein chain. So, now your porphyrin ring in your hand and that is now embedded within the protein chain. How the protein has only the cystinyl residues. So, correctly disposed cystinyl sulfur residues were there and those are reacting with this vinyl group and this vinyl group. So, these two vinyl groups are attacked and you get a strong protein chain and that protein chain attached to the porphyrin ring. So, what is the difference with that molecule is that in cytochromes the protein bearing two sulfur ends now covalently attached to the macrocyclic ring which is your porphyrin ring. That means, its reactivity pattern and all the other things will be completely different to that of your myoglobin and hemoglobin molecule. So, this particular one that means, you have these four groups from these and you have the fifth and the sixth positions from the histidine as well as the methionine sulfur. Now, you have a typical octahedral molecule in your hand and that octahedral molecule will basically give us some electron transfer chain in mitochondria. So, we have mitochondrial electron transfer chain. So, mitochondrial electron transfer chain involving 
our cytochrome 1 molecule will study is your cytochrome C. Hmm. So, there are a large number of molecules, but basic difference between these is only in the porphyrin chain. So, basically this is very important chain, we will start from some biological reducing agent nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide in the oxidized form. Hmm. So, you have NAD plus we write and the other form is NADH, hmm. it is a reduced form. So, so, at one end you have this, then you have flavoprotein, these are all biological reductants. So, this flavoprotein will then transfer the electron to cytochrome B, then to cytochrome C 1 to cytochrome C. So, there we have the cytochrome C where it is. So, this up to this point we get that cytochrome. So, cytochrome C what will do is it has some important role to play in the electron transfer chain in the mitochondria that it accepts electron from cytochrome C 1 and donates the electron to some other molecule which are known as cytochrome C oxidase. Why these are known as oxidase? Because these are responsible for oxidizing your cytochrome C. So, on the right hand side what we get, so it has a higher potential. So, the cytochrome C oxidase can function as an oxidizing agent for your cytochrome C and it is a very complex molecule little bit we will see afterwards that how cytochrome C bearing iron bearing porphyrin play some important role to oxidize cytochrome C. And lastly this will end up in dumping electron to O2 for our respiration. So, the mitochondrial respiration what we use and we burn our glucose material or any other food material. So, we burn this material that means the glucose material with the help of your dioxygen molecule. So, ultimately this dioxygen molecule is accepting 4 electron and dioxygen molecule will be converted to water molecule. So, this is a long chain and this particular long chain we will see the different steps depending upon the difference in the corresponding E 0 values, the redox potential values. So, all these molecules will have a typical E half values. So, we have a characteristic E half values for all these biological molecules. So, those who are on the right hand side should be able to oxidize the species on the left because you know that this is the strongest possible oxidant in your hand and, and somewhere here above this NAD plus we have the glucose molecule. So, glucose is getting oxidized by your dioxygen molecule but we are not allowing this dioxygen molecule directly to react with the glucose molecule otherwise that will be a burning process. So, in a stepwise manner depending upon this electron transfer chain. So, this chain is required such that you can have in a stepwise fashion the oxidation of this glucose molecule or any other food material by the dioxygen molecule and depending upon the difference in your E 0 values we have the corresponding required amount of free energy change for these reactions. And those free energy change for these different reactions will be utilized for our ATP synthesis. Hmm. So, the basic goal for getting all these things that how we use the cytochrome C and how this cytochrome C is useful for all these reactions to produce our different amount of ATP molecules for our energy purpose. So, this interesting class of molecules, these cytochromes are first discovered by a man which is C. A. McMahon. You should know little bit about the history, it is not very old molecule, it was discovered in 1884 only. Hmm. Then the total characterization was made and people propose that it has a corresponding porphyrin ring or the iron ring 
is done by another man who is David Killen. What he did, he has a handmade spectroscope. So he has to rely on the determination of the spectral behavior or the spectral property of all these molecules. So porphyrin rings, what we have seen, they have a very strong and characteristic absorption spectrum. And that characteristic absorption, if we are able to monitor, so we have through this handmade microscope, sorry, microscope, we have the characteristic absorption. And these characteristic absorption are known as sorret bands. So, whenever there is a porphyrin in the system, so in all the biological fluid or biological liquid sample, if we suspect that there is a cytochrome molecule that means the porphyrin ring is there, so we must detect the corresponding sorret band into the system. Because in all these electron transfer molecule, uh, molecules involving there, they are responsible for different types of oxidation and reduction reactions. Because those reactions are responsible for our very survival that means respiration. How we utilize dioxygen molecule for this respiration. So, this particular system has when we are getting the characteristic absorption bands. So, we will get three different types basically in the nature of their heme group. So, cytochrome A we can have, cytochrome B we can have and as well as cytochrome C and they are first characterized in yeast cells. So, this nature of this corresponding porphyrin ring will tell us that if we have a B type cytochrome present which is nothing but a protoporphyrin 9. Just now I told you that it would be protoporphyrin. Some number is also tagged with it protoporphyrin 9 and which is also present in hemoglobin the same porphyrin mm, the same porphyrin ring is also present in our hemoglobin molecule then a type cytochrome is a different one with regard to that of our substitution and in this particular case we have a hydrophobic tail of isoprene group so we have the isoprene tail is present plus a formyl group in place of our originally present methyl substitutions. So, nothing is changing there only the substitution is changing from one to the other. Then we have the vinyl group attached porphyrin 9 for cytochrome C and we have a covalent. Now, the difference is that already we have seen that it has the vinyl groups form present in the ring covalent bond, 
covalent thawether bonds with whom with cysteine residues of the protein cysteine residues of the protein so they all present in everywhere not only in the mitochondria so they are known as basically electron transporters who are responsible for transporting electrons so they are basically electron transporters we have already seen that they are present in mitochondria they are also present in chloroplasts then endoplasmic reticulum and different bacterial redox chain as well mm. so it is not only present in human system it is present in plant origin it is present in bacterial origin also so in bacteria also they play the redox transfer so in bacterial redox chain so we have now the iron center which is satisfied from its all coordination demand that means they are all hexa coordinated so all six positions are attached to the ligand as well as the other groups coming from the protein chain so we have the iron center so it has only option now that it can settle between a oxidation state of Fe3 and Fe2 and at the same time we will just talk about the corresponding spin state whether this iron center is in the high spin state or the low spin state and those spin states will be dictated by the apical binding donors that means the donor atoms which are coming from the fifth side as well as from the sixth sides. So, this thiwether binding, the thiwether sulfur binding is a strong binding. So, that gives us only the option for low spin. So, we will just settle between the iron 3 that means the ferric iron as well as the ferrous iron, but both of them are in low spin state. So, in this particular case what will it have? It will have 1. unpaired electron hmm. so it has one unpaired electron and at the same time it has no unpaired electron and the porphyrin ring is given a charge of L 2 minus from the deponation because two of the nitrogen atoms were bearing the hydrogen atoms. So, it has L 2 minus. So, in this particular case it has a formal charge of plus 1 and in this particular case the formal charge would be 0. So, 
by settling between these two it will facilitate the electron transfer. Hmm. So, it will be responsible for until unless some modification is taking place it will not go for a 5 coordinated species what we get for our myoglobin and hemoglobin molecule that means one position is vacant which is occupied by water molecule. So, until unless something you do for this that means you take out the thioether molecule or the histidine residue you cannot transfer this particular center to a 5 coordinated one. So, until and unless you make it 5 coordinated it cannot bind to dioxygen molecule. So, that we will see afterwards for some other type of molecules that how you can make this tetrapyrrole nucleus to a 5 coordinated one which will be useful for binding the dioxygen molecule. So, regarding the structure of this porphyrin unit it is a basic structure I am just coming back again from one structure to the another. So, if we just simply able to draw in this form the three dimensional structure bearing four pyrrole unit which is a little bit different one what I have drawn right now. So, you have these nitrogen bearing rings here then we have other two rings that means the pyrrole rings which are bearing hydrogen. Similarly, the other one is also like this. they are connected. So, what we have drawn just now is different. So, it has a bowl shape structure. So, two of these tertiary nitrogens devoid of hydrogen atoms are pointing upward and two NH groups are pointing downward in a three dimensional structure. So, which is going to accept our iron center which is supposed to be octahedral one in the bare form also when it is attached to 6 water molecules. So, this is our OH2, this is our R. So, what will happen? So, this particular structure which is known as a corresponding out of plane structure. So, is also known as a deformed structure as a saddling deformation. what is that how it is known as this is then that unprotonated nitrogen atom these are all unprotonated nitrogen atoms. So, unprotonated nitrogen atoms point upwards. and next the protonated nitrogen atoms point downwards. So, the protonated atoms point downwards. 
So, what will happen next? That you bring this iron above it. So, these two nitrogens will be available from the top only. So, your iron will come over here. So, we are bringing this on this. So, this is your iron. So, it will form two bonds one with this nitrogen and another with the second nitrogen. So, it will have 4 remaining water molecules. So, this is a very weak interaction. So, iron center is forming by losing 2 water molecules. So, it will immediately lose 2 water molecules and will sit above the particular porphyrin saddle structure and this particular structure is also known and considered as this iron is sitting a top complex is known as sitting a top. complex. Then what will happen? This next step is the important step. That means, you can go for sequential deprotonation of the two pyrrole nitrogen atoms. That means, this hydrogen and this hydrogen one after another will go. Hmm. So, it is not a immediate one, but a sequence. So, sequential deprotonation of the two pyrrole nitrogen groups. Hmm. So, when they are deprotonated, they will start interacting with these iron center and ultimately you get a metallated porphyrin. So, so all four bonds are formed. So, it is not only true for iron, but is also true for other useful metal ions which has giving rise to some important molecules like chlorophyll or vitamin B 12 in case of chlorine molecule. Where we get So, now the porphyrin is sitting comfortably within the cavity of the pyrrole ring. So, within the ring we get the corresponding metallated porphyrin. So, this is the way how these molecules are forming the corresponding complex with iron, with nickel, with cobalt and this will give rise to your cytochrome molecule at the same time. So, we have with this molecule two axial ligands. So, these axial ligands play some important role that means, the from the position number 5 and 6 they basically control the corresponding range of redox potentials. So, the binding of these two groups that means, the binding from the fifth side 
as well as the six sides. Which one is your histidine 18 and methionine 80? These two you should remember nicely. So, these two groups basically control our redox potential. At the same time, if we can control the ionization of the propionic acid side chain, because you still have two propionic acid side chain. which have a typical values for the pKs. So, in all these cases what we will see in all these electron transfer chain we will just see the detail of these that means, whenever there is a transfer of electron from one side to the other that means, in the biological system we have the membrane and along this membrane electron is coming from one side to the other at the same time we will see the proton is also going from one side to the other. So, proton is always playing some important role to play not only that in which direction the electron is going and how the proton is for, uh, moving in the opposite direction or sometime both of them are going together that means, the electron is moving as well as the proton is going for your deprotonation. And from the periphery of these porphyrin ring you have the two propionic acid side chain and those two propionic acid side chains will go for the different deprotonation. So, you have the macrocyclic ring and here you have the chain and here you have the chain for the propionic acid groups. So, this particular ligand which is functioning as L 2 minus through the deprotonation of the nitrogen atoms only. So, we are not considering the corresponding protonation as well as the deprotonation of the propionic acid side chain. But depending upon the available pH value of the system that means, in which particular part of the cell or in the biological system where you have a typical pH. So, this particular pH will control this corresponding protonation level of this propionic acid side chain. Hmm. So, this is nothing but your porphyrin. Eh? So, that particular protonation will control our different E 0 values. So, this particular proton will also behaving as a valve for your electron transfer, because sometimes if it is a metal centered electron transfer we will see that iron 3 plus is reducing to iron 2 plus and we can have a typical E 0 value. And in the biological system, if we are able to determine the corresponding pH, we all the time if it is dependent on the corresponding proton gradient or the pH. So, the E 0 value we have to report against the different pH values. So, this pH value you should also know the corresponding buffered medium. So, if you have a acidic buffered medium and if you can have a basic buffered medium, you will get two different E 0 values. So, basically the pH, the proton in the system will control the corresponding E 0 value, whether you that cytochrome will accept the electron or whether that cytochrome will donate the electron within the environment, you can have the corresponding protein chain and all other thing as well as you have the corresponding proton gradient that will control the different E 0 values. Okay, thank you.